Pre-COVID inventory levels unlikely to return to the automotive industry, but trim mixes and turn rates may gradually return to normal. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. There's also the phenomena of pre-selling cars and how that has shaped the retail landscape. We'll get into that before the end of today's show. I think inventory levels being unlikely to return to pre-COVID highs is something we've known for some time now. That's right. What is interesting to us about this automotive news report is the point that trim mixes are likely to return to normal in the coming car seasons. Yes, a return to trims that were available in years past would be majorly effective to dropping prices. As we've stated before, as car manufacturers had to pick and choose what to make with limited supplies, they went with the higher trim levels because those were higher dollar vehicles, meaning more profits in a slower sales cycle. Now, while that may have made sense for car manufacturers in the early days of the pandemic, this strategy proved to price many customers right out of the car market entirely. A little recap on the backstory here in the event we have newcomers joining us for the first time today. Both inventory and sales initially plummeted when the pandemic began in March 2020, but while sales recovered rapidly and even surpassed pre-pandemic levels in the ensuing months, inventory continued to drop, falling below 1 million by fall 2021. Inventory levels that low were disastrous for car buyers and have created much of the nonsense we're seeing in the car market today. As we've reported on inventory updates, because supply and demand still does drive everything, yep. inventory has climbed back towards 2 million in the last quarter of 2022 and the first quarter of 2023. But nobody expects the industry to get back to the pre-COVID inventory levels of 3 to 3.5 million. We've simply said that reaching 2 million cars in inventory by June would go a long way towards bringing a break in the hard stance that dealers have taken on their pricing structure. And now we are seeing with Toyota finally announcing a break from their strategy of holding back. We expect others to follow suit and ramp up car production too. We see high potential for two and a half million cars in inventory happening by year's end. There's something very important to understand about how automakers left themselves so vulnerable to a supply slowdown. For many years now, car manufacturers have been highly dependent on what is known as just-in-time delivery of crucial parts, especially microchips, and that dependence left hundreds of thousands of cars sitting on auxiliary lots instead of making their way to the dealer's lots. What might seem like a very stupid strategy, it might surprise you to know, that much of those inventory management strategies came from the teachings based in the country of Japan. Perhaps some of you aren't old enough to remember or simply haven't researched that it was an American scientist by the name of Dr. Deming who taught in Japan and ultimately led Japanese manufacturing to beating American manufacturing at nearly every turn. American companies started sending their executives to Japan to study their techniques, and many of them returned with just-in-time inventory as being key to improving quality and reducing huge investments in products sitting on the shelf. Brings back many fond memories for me. I was heavily involved in quality control in manufacturing during that time and got the chance to tour various automotive plants. Ford in Dearborn, Michigan was one of them, and then later I also had the opportunity to tour what was then the Ford Assembly Plant in St. Paul, known today as the Twin Cities Assembly Plant. Also, I had a chance to meet the American scientist Liz mentioned. It was Dr. Deming. He was in Minneapolis for a If Japan Can, Why Can't We seminar after he had returned to America. He was here trying to save this country from its own terrible corporate management. Right. Dr. Deming was near the end of his life at the time, and I got the chance to speak with him during one of the breaks, and he recalled questions I had asked that afternoon, and he said, you ask really great questions. You're going to go a long ways with your perspective on life, young man. <laughs> In my saved keepsake, I have an autographed copy of the book, Out of the Crisis. It is signed by W. Edwards Deming, 26 July, 1991. I'll have the editor show the signed copy on the whiteboard here for your, your convenience. What's funny about the conference in Minneapolis is that while I was the youngest attendee by far, I seemed to be the only person in the room who actually understood Deming. I was a sponge for industry insights and wisdom, particularly as they related to executive level management. And I'm pretty sure from all the idiotic questions those executives asked Deming, that I was the only person in the room who had actually read his book before attending the conference. Oh. The subtitle of the book reads, Essential Reading for Managers and Leaders. This is the classic work on management, problem solving, quality control, and more based on the famous theory, 14 points for management. The book was published in 1982 and stated that American companies required nothing less than a total transformation of management style. Sadly, the book is now out of print. Deming is dead and gone. 
The automakers and many business people of today have learned next to nothing from the wisdom he shared. A total transformation is exactly what the car business needs today. You see, friends, Kevin's insight into the automotive industry doesn't just come from being a former car salesman. His background includes studying and then meeting people like Dr. Deming and touring automakers' facilities, improving grounds like the massive GM facility in Milford, Michigan. He has not only seen and experienced the daily functions of several dealerships, but he has seen the automotive industry on the inside, too. Kevin has a perspective that is truly unique in today's world. And just like Deming's title, Out of the Crisis, Kevin sees a crisis in today's auto industry, and he is helping lead smart consumers through these current headaches and onto the other side, so to speak. In my quest to learn from some of the industry's brightest minds, I also got a chance to meet Ricardo Semler, the CEO and majority owner of Semco. I attended a conference he put on in Detroit many years ago. He was so friendly and available to guests afterwards, I actually got a chance to talk to him. For those of you in executive level management, Ricardo Semler is another genius mind worth learning from. He's the author of The Maverick and The Seven Day Weekend, both excellent reading for those of you who are in leadership and are book fans. But enough about my personal journey to study and learn. Another thing that Kevin mentioned in the beginning and happened as a result of the pandemic-related shortages was dealer pre-selling. By the end of 2022, 28% of inventory visible to consumers on dealer websites was in transit and already pre-sold. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Currently, in transit, pre-sold vehicles have fallen to 23% of the visible inventory in 2023, but many experts do not expect to see that falling back to peer zero. We agree. As long as there is limited inventory on dealer slots, there will be a given percent of cars that are pre-sold, and our viewers have reported running into this many, many times. Pre-selling inventory got so bad there for a while that GM sent out a notice to their dealerships stating that they were barred from reporting the sale of a vehicle before it was even delivered to a customer. Right. And you know why dealers would do this? To hit monthly quotas and earn extra bonuses, that's why. Yeah, and GM got a little ticked at the dealers when low inventory levels created issues related to pre-selling a vehicle after a dealer was invoiced but before the customer received the vehicle. This created concern by GM for very legitimate reasons. Reporting the sale early triggered the start date for financing payments, warranties, and trials of OnStar, SiriusXM, and other services, potentially months before the customer actually received the vehicle. How would you like to have your three-year bumper-to-bumper warranty reduced to just 30 months because the car you ordered took six months to get to you? Plain old greed was driving it. Not good. So what we're saying is, looking at the auto industry as a whole, from the parts and the plants to the ticked-off customers on the dealer floor, together we've seen it all. But we are very pleased with the dealers we've met and worked with that don't intentionally tick people off. You can't make everyone happy, but there are several who do the best they can in this market. All right, if you're new here to the Homer Guy channel or you're a good dealer stopping by for the first time, you should be aware that the Homer Guy team is on a mission to highlight and promote good dealers from around the country. So we'd love to hear from you. We've been telling consumers about bad dealers for well over a decade, and some in our audience say that the phrase, good car dealer, is an oxymoron. <laughs> I get that. But I know that isn't true. I've personally met several outstanding dealers and brought viewers from the Homer Guy channel to see them. One that comes to mind immediately is an old friend of mine, Grant Schweder, who owns Schweder Chevrolet in Cold Springs, Minnesota. His father, Bob, got him started in the automotive business. And I can tell you from personal experience that completely satisfied is not just a slogan at Schweder's, but it's the reason that Schweder Chevrolet has become so successful. I salute dealer owners like Grant Schweder, quality individuals who shattered the stereotype of typical car dealers. Because of personal experiences with people like Grant Schweder and others I've come to know over the years, it is for this reason that I confidently say, we know you're out there. So now we urge you good dealers out there to join dealer owners like Grant Schweder in Cold Springs, Minnesota in breaking the typical dealer stereotype and use the dealer document we have posted in the description box down below or pinned in the comment section. And we will definitely be in touch with you. We want to add you to the list of good dealers we are building. In summary, we are essentially in the search of dealers who offer good customer service with no funny business and provide a simple, honest car buying experience for their customers. So if this sentence describes you, jump on board with us. By the way, if you're a car salesman or any level of management in a dealership and you'd like to nominate the dealership you work for as one of the good guys, we invite you to do so. Yes. The form link is in the description box down below and tagged in the comment section too. Again, contact us with any questions or comments by texting to 701-441-3399 or email kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com. We sincerely look forward to hearing from you. 
By the way, I'd also like to thank the many viewers who have sent good dealer nominations to us, and we encourage others to follow with more. Just send us plenty of details as to why you think a particular dealer is good. Again, use the email kevinthehomerguy at gmail.com. Also, for our newest viewers out there, it's vitally important that you don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future announcements. Later this year is coming the announcement of the all-new hassle-free car buying process to help car buyers to get a new vehicle without all the typical challenges. And we are excited to say that very soon, we will be making matches between given buyers and good prospective good dealers to conduct some trial tests as we approach the full launch date of this car buying process. There's a simple Google document to sign up for early notification on. It's also in the description box below, and you can find it at our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Right here, courtesy of the Homer Guy team, and our show is where you'll always find the most reliable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. As I learned years ago from the likes of Dr. Deming, when things have become so bad as they currently are in retail car sales, a complete transformation is needed, and that is exactly what we are helping to create. And we so appreciate the trust and confidence that thousands of you have shown by getting on the notification list of our new hassle-free car buying process. It's awesome. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our ginormous YouTube family. If you've just recently joined our fast-growing group of subscribers, we welcome you. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal, the Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.